You're watching Retirement Talk with Eric Carney, Southwest Florida's retirement television. He's an author, a radio host, a fiduciary, and Southwest Florida's premier investment advisor. Here is senior investment advisor, Eric Carney. That's right. This is Retirement Talk with Eric Carney. He is the founder of Retirement Wealth Advisors. Also joining us today is a financial advisor in his office, Joseph Lanza. I'm your host, Spike Spangle. Gentlemen, it is good to see you. Uh, Eric, how are you doing today? I'm great, Spike. Good to see you again. Thank you so much, Joseph, yourself. Very ready well, to do Spike. some retirement planning live on air here? I am. I'm excited. Fantastic. So uh, we've got a wonderful program today. Decision-making in retirement can be difficult. Uh, as the commercial says, as we're coming right into the TV show here, that uh, you only have one retirement, right? We've got to make those decisions correctly. You want to make sure that you do it right. But there's this whole other set of factors that come into play when it comes to any kind of financial decisions, and it's actually our emotions. Now, I thought we're supposed to take emotions out of the factor right. when we're making financial decisions. Uh, do, do you ever see that affect some of your clients or folks who call into the show? Oh, absolutely, all the time. You know, I mean, you know, we have to ask people, when you come into the office, do you have the emotional capacity to make a change? That's one of the first questions that we ask. And what we see is we see where a lot of people, you know, they have, they have different feelings towards money. Some were controlled by money. Some had money and lost that money. Some never had money. Some people just sacrificed everything they had just to get to retirement. And they're like, I can't afford to lose anything. So these emotions are taking over and it's very difficult for them to make a decision. There's a lot of times where we go more towards a bad emotion rather than a positive emotion. So a lot of times it's not just managing money over the years, it's actually managing people's emotions. There's, uh, there's actually a uh, decade's worth of research behind this. Nobel Prize winning economic researchers, an entire field called behavioral economics. Uh. And for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, our emotional reactions have been ingrained into us. This has been studied by uh, Kahneman, Dr. Richard Thaler, I believe out of University of Chicago. Uh, we've all done a little bit of research on this. So we need to balance this. The, the balance between our emotions and our decision making. So how do you see emotions, first of all, making decisions, good or bad, when, when it comes to investing? Let, let's start maybe with some personal examples from the office. Well, I think what happens a lot of times, somebody will come in and they'll say, look, my parents ran out of money in retirement. So all of a sudden, they were taking care of their parents financially in retirement. They might have gotten up to 86 or 87 and just ran out of money. Now all of a sudden the children have to step in when they're trying to go through retirement and now they have to actually help fund their parents. So now they're terrified of running out of money in retirement. So there's a lot of things where we want to listen to someone's story. We want to listen to their background and we want to pay attention to that. And we're understanding what difficulties or what financial hurdles that they went through with money. And that is going to help us understand their investment behavior when it comes to their financial plan. Right. We got, uh, this one is sometimes called anchoring bias, that the child is, is anchored to the assets that the, their parents had had. Right. They say, well, that was my dad's account. I, I don't want to sell it. I don't want to change it. Right. But maybe your parents left it to you because they wanted you to go yeah. ahead and live Th a great th life. That's a great point, Spike. And, and the bottom line is with inheritances. Remember, your parents left you an asset. They didn't necessarily leave you a stock. They left you with a pile of money. Now it is your responsibility to actually manage it towards your own goals. And these stock markets change. Tools, products, investments change. And so you have to make sure that you're taking that money and, and have a fiduciary responsibility with it. You wanna make sure that you're being responsible with that. And that's what we're trying to help clients understand when you inherit money. Let's take this money that they gave you, let's compliment it, let's respect it, but let's actually build it for you and even maybe possibly for a next generation. Uh, Joseph, let me ask you about maybe another emotional roadblock. One of it might mm -hmm. be the difference kind of between how we look at our money and our savings. A lot of people talk about the, the phrase liquidity. I need liquidity. I need to make sure that I can access my money. And I think it makes me feel that people are only considering looking at their entire life savings in the short term. Right, exactly. As opposed to understanding how long they might be retired 
How can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, we live life in the short term. We're living it in the here and now. And I think a lot of people are probably thinking more about what they're going to have for lunch tomorrow than what their retirement account is going to look like in 10 years. But uh, us as planners, that's exactly what we want to be thinking about. We have to know in 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years that your retirement account has been able to stay afloat when we factor in taxes, inflation, your withdrawals. What if we see another market correction? So while it's important to know where you're at right now, it's far more important to know where you're going and what direction you're headed because a lot of times people will get into that final stage of retirement they're finally done working and now they're saying okay well it's time to decumulate and pull withdrawals from my accounts and they're thinking it's just going to be you know you stop investing well that's not that's not what's going to happen you could have retirements that last plus 30 years so those those investments those accounts have to last you that whole time so you want to make sure that your investments are properly reflecting the time period with that. I think I think what it really comes down to is tough financial love you know and there's sometimes where you have to step in and you're like look this is not good for you, this is why, you know, and you, you have to anchor those emotions in with that financial plan and that income plan, and, you know, you have to put things into perspective. I think when it comes to emotions, love is the most purest emotion, but then all of a sudden, you have the most powerful emotion is fear, and so what, what do we gravitate towards? Fear, right? And emotions guide us, they help us understand each other, they allow us to strike, they allow us to avoid danger, it allows us to understand how actually people um, meet and greet people and interact with each other. But the problem is, is that the negative emotions take over our positive emotions and we pay more attention to that. The asymmetry in those is hard to avoid. So again, you know, you are constantly managing emotions while managing financial issues, while managing money, while managing income. I, I was mean, going to say, you kind of sound like a, like a financial psychologist or yeah, sociologist that you're helping them all the way through. Yeah, 100%. And that's where investment behavior has become such a big deal. Uh, Donna Crone, who's our certified financial planner, she is a behavioral specialist. And she understands the psychology of this. And to me, it's, it's very fascinating. Right, right. So how, where do you start the conversation with folks when you can tell that they're, they're anchored to an asset or they're calling you and saying, did you see about this return? Did you see about this? Have we jumped into this sector? How do you help keep people's emotions in check right. while still letting them know that you have their best interest in mind? Yeah. We're just not going to react one way or another because of a, an emotional sway. Well, a lot of times we talk about the personal financial blueprint, right? Mm -hmm. And the personal financial blueprint is something that we do for every single prospective client that walks in the door. This personal financial blueprint is more than likely going to show you more about your portfolio than ever before. So if you did inherit money or you have an old 401k, we're going to show you what's going on with that portfolio. And it actually helps you understand where you're coming from in order to understand where you're going. And so a lot of times that report alone is going to help people say, okay, I definitely need to make a change. And the one thing that we always want to do, this has been very important to me, is we want to respect where the money came from, how it was earned. Did you have a business that you eventually sold? Did you bootstrap that entire business your entire life and finally sell it for your retirement money? We always want to be respectful of that money and understand your goals and objectives and try to point people in the right direction. I want to keep talking about how we evaluate and best use our decisions and avoid emotional decisions in retirement. We do have to take a very short break. Folks, call right now. As Eric was just saying, we want to get that blueprint started for you, and it is complimentary for the viewers of the program. Get your own personal financial blueprint. We're going to take a look at your investments, your taxes, do you have estate planning needs and all of your health care choices and all of these combined together along with that tax strategy? And then we're going to put it together in a written plan for you. All you got to do is call 800-779-1942. More retirement talk with Eric Carney and Joseph Lanza right after this. What does your retirement look like? Is it filled with travel, spending time with family, uninterrupted rounds at the golf course, or are you too worried to even think about your hopes and dreams? Eric and his team can answer your questions with a complimentary review of your retirement and income plan, and it all starts with getting to know you. They'll do exactly that by going over your current strategy to expose the weaknesses that may exist in your retirement portfolio. Plus, they'll explain potential risks and possible strategies to you in easy to understand terms and help get you reacquainted with your portfolio and income strategy. Once they understand your retirement goals, objectives, and dreams, 
They'll work to custom build a retirement plan to help ensure that you cannot outlive your income in retirement. Because every dream needs a plan. Call Eric today and schedule your visit. You only retire once, so let's get it right the first time. Welcome back to Retirement Talk with Eric Carney and Joseph Lanza of Retirement Wealth Advisors. I'm your host, Spike Spangle. You know, we can't help the fact that we are emotional creatures, but yeah. we want to try to keep our emotions out of our financial decisions as much as possible. Right. Uh, here's another place, though, that really, really gets people stirred up, and that, that's the mass media. Yeah. That's those talking heads on TV. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm talking about the people who are maybe the, the Kramers, the people who are yelling the bites uh, and the screen, you know, get right. this and then all the political noise that's out there. I say that, folks, literally, I'm the talking head. They're financial advisors helping people every single day in the offices. It, there is a difference. You're not just broadcasting the financial news. Right. You're actually putting together the strategies. Uh, what is the difference between all of the, the media news out there yelling and screaming at you? Are they doing that just to get points and clicks and trying to get traffic through their stations and their media channels? I think so. I mean, the, the thing is, we are the boots on the ground. We are the ones that are responsible for your needs. You know, there's several people out there in the media, but what I tell a lot of my clients is, look, they're not going to be there when you're 75, when you're 80, 85. I am. I'm actually running your financial plan. So people are paying attention to the media in two minutes and making these decisions that they want to make for the next 15 to 20 years. It doesn't make sense. And, you know, when you think about uh, in the olden days, like now all of a sudden we're exposed to news 24-7. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it used to be you were you had little uh, newspaper articles that you could read. I think times were much simpler. Yeah. Or you had the evening news or the late evening news. Right. And that was about it. Now it's all, it's all constant. ever present. We are bombarded with things 24-7. It's actually overwhelming. I literally had to turn off my Twitter account. There was so much negativity on there that actually brought me down. I'm typically a very positive person, but I can see where a lot of people get a very negative attitude towards that. You're constantly bombarded with negative news trying to grab your attention. You know, if we go back to the Wright brothers back in 1903, they actually built the very first plane. And people were very skeptical about that spike. You know, they're like, oh, this is a weird thing and everything. And they kept staying at it, staying at it. And six years later, they really thought that they could build an aerial craft to haul freight. And that's what they called it back then. And so in 1909, the Washington Post came out and they said, this is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> and it was one of their main articles. And they said, this is never going to happen. All of your freight is going to be slow growth across the United States. Don't ever think they're going to fly. And so now all of a sudden the Wright brothers were under the gun because everybody's like, oh, you know, you guys are wasting your time. It's kind of hokey, you know, that you build that. But all of a sudden, four months later, they actually had their first payload. And now all of a sudden, look at where we stand today, right? You have FedEx that's going overnight. You have, you can deliver pretty much anything that you want. So the bottom line is, is that everyone paid attention to the Washington Post back then. That was big news, and they negated everything that they said, but they also believed it. And so all of a sudden, the Wright brothers said, look, I'm not buying into this. And this is what we're trying to tell clients. Don't buy into the news. They want to hook you with bad news. They want to hook you with fear. And what do we pay attention to? Fear. Right. And so this is where we have to wrangle their emotions, anchor them into their financial plan and say, look, I don't care about the U.S. economy. I don't care about the world economy. Not that I want it to crash, but I care about your personal economy and how we're going to get you through this. Right. Uh, Joseph, I wonder if you've experienced that yourself. Look, uh, innovation can be scary. New can be mm -hmm. scary. Uh, 20 years ago, probably one of the most common investment tools uh, here in the United States would have been mutual funds. Right, right. Now we moved over to something called exchange-traded funds. Mm -hmm. It's taken a lot of explaining to folks why this can be yeah. a lower-cost tool for them that will help. You know, what do you see when, when you're talking with folks? They've been invested in their 401ks 15, 20, 25 years. They're probably not comfortable making changes. How right. do you talk about the change aspect of moving into retirement with their accounts? 
Right, so well, when you're in your retirement and you're managing that account, relevancy is really key here, making sure that your portfolio is updated with the times. That's how you're gonna get the best rate of return for yourself and your financial plan. So like mutual funds are a great example. They charge a lot of high internal expense ratio fees, right? And they also have been underperforming for quite some time now. 20 years ago though, they were the biggest fad and they worked very well, but times change. New things are starting to come out, the market adapts. And if it's like the saying, if you don't adapt, you die, right? You have to make mm -hmm. sure that you keep changing the portfolio. It doesn't mean you have to be a day trader, right? But in every single year, there's new sectors that are more uh, probable to succeed than the last sector. What is the economy doing? Does that have an effect on how we're investing? So it's always changing and it's kind of a process that is never gonna end, right? The stock market, right. the investing process, this is why you should never have a set it and forget it portfolio. It's, it's never going to end. Mm -hmm. Right. Eric, I want to ask you, we've talked before about annuities. Um, have annuities also evolved? I mean, there are different kinds, but I mean, just like automobiles, just like phones. I yeah. mean, I mean, he doesn't remember it, but they used to be connected to the wall. That's right. And now, we got, right. now we got them in our pockets. That's right. Uh, but, uh, but the same thing with annuities. Hasn't there been an evolution of them as well? Yeah. How, what's your feeling on them? I mean, the funny thing is, is about 12 years ago, we really started to embrace them. Why? Because the fees went way down. Now, all of a sudden, they actually had a purpose while you were living. A lot of people bought them for the death benefit or whatever it may be. But now, all of a sudden, the living benefits have really gone up. You have very strong increasing income. So now you can outpace inflation. Now, all of a sudden, you have impairment riders or long-term care riders on them. Now, all of a sudden, you have very low fees or no fees. So they can actually be a very strategic way to now give you guaranteed income to now reduce your emotions from your income plan. So it doesn't have to be your entire portfolio, but if you know that you have a small portion in there that's guaranteed, why not? And it works for a lot of people, especially as they get older. Uh, I, I, I don't have a direction on this question here, but you guys deal with, with clients every single day in the offices. Uh, where is maybe somebody uh, uh, where you've helped them avoid a bad emotional decision you know yeah. maybe making a decision as somebody has passed away and they think they have to do something right away right or chasing after the market or maybe stopping somebody from selling what is maybe a client experience you've had recently i think one one thing that we've really noticed is people getting divorced and it's unbelievable that we'll get a phone call one day and say hey, eric i really need to talk to you we're splitting up and it's like, oh boy, okay. Who gets so, to keep the advisor? Exactly. Who gets to keep the advisor? How awkward is it? Are we going to try to keep the assets and, and keep each client? But it's, it's, it is an awkward conversation because now all of a sudden, not only is that couple going through something uh, mental, uh, it's, a, it's a mental thing, it's a physical thing, it's an emotional thing. Now all of a sudden they're also going through something financial. So it's a very um, it's a very sensitive subject that we have to go through, but that's life spike, right? I mean, that's yeah. the whole thing. So what we're doing is, is we're saying, okay, how can we help you get through this? And our job is to take out the emotions from that, but help them to continue to grow financially. The other thing is when there's a loss of a spouse. And unfortunately, as our client ages, they actually pass away after a few times or a few uh, a few times a few years <laughs> yeah a few yeah. years thank you yeah. and uh, so all of a sudden there's now a widow or a widower so now all of a sudden we have to make sure that they're financially taken care of and again these are very difficult times people are going through something that's mental physical and so forth and so again we have to take into account how they feel about that and propel them through financially Joseph uh, you've talked about it before is that w mm -hmm. without a financial plan we're mm -hmm. making decisions kind of uh, depending on, on what's going on, either in the right. news or from our emotions. Mm -hmm. But with the plan, mm -hmm. you can tell people they don't have to react emotionally. Like, for instance, what our Eric was just talking about there, saying right. if you get a client who calls in, my husband's passed away, you get to say, mm -hmm. take some time. You don't have to do anything right, right away. Exactly. Have you had to hit, take that phone call before? Yeah, it happens quite a, uh, quite a bit if parents are uh, happening to pass away and we're having working with their children already a lot of times. But when you have that estate plan already, in fact, you're working with the estate planner, it's a phone call away of saying, hey, this happened. Well, everything's already in force. And we want a smooth transition, right? So when we're planning for that in advance, that becomes a smooth transition. We're just calling the estate planner, just letting you know so-and-so has passed away. Here's what we're doing. You know, let's not bother the client. Everything's already in line for that. And we're planning for a tax, the most tax-efficient transfer that we can have have as well and that's just one example but the financial plan allows us to do that for a lot of different situations in a person's retirement lifetime yeah right. I think people expect a smooth transaction when things happen and the, you know we've already forecasted for that so when all of a sudden that money flows to the right uh, people it's just 
a lot easier for that. And it's easier for to get through that event as well. Right. Well, I know you're not estate planning attorneys, but you do help quarterback the mm -hmm, entire situation, mm -hmm. make sure the assets are placed in the right place. We're going to have to take a quick commercial. I'm going to tell them about the blueprint. Folks, call right now so you can get your own complimentary financial blueprint. All you have to do is call 800-779-1942 so Eric and Joseph can get you started on the process. We're going to take a look at your investments, your fees, how much risk are you taking, We'll do a complete tax analysis. Take a look at your health care choices for now and longer down the road, like long-term care and estate planning. And it's not whether or not you have millions and millions of dollars. An estate plan is as simple as, are you going to leave money to someone? Well, then you need an estate plan. To get started, all you've got to do is call the phone number you see right here, 800-779-1942. More retirement talk with Eric and Joseph right after this. What I enjoy most about retirement planning is sitting down with you and having real conversations about your retirement dreams and goals. We specialize in helping people just like you prepare for the retirement they've always dreamed of. Hey, Southwest Florida. Thank you so much for watching Retirement Talk with Eric Carney. While we've had a lot of fun doing the show, and we always appreciate your comments, more importantly, we've been able to help out an awful lot of people meet their retirement needs. And believe me, I get it. A lot of you watching today are just as frustrated with the financial industry as I am. But at Retirement Wealth Advisors, we have a completely different experience. By license and law, we're looking to put your best interest first. So whether it's a financial plan that you're looking for, you're out there in a financial no man's land, or you're truly looking for a second opinion, please pick up the phone and give us a call today and let's get that conversation started. And remember, strive for excellence. Your wealth deserves it. Welcome back to Retirement Talk with Eric Carney. He is the founder of Retirement Wealth Advisors right here in Southwest Florida. Also joining us is Joseph Lanza, financial advisor in the office. I'm your host, Spike Spangle. And today we've been talking about trying to take our emotions out of our financial decisions. But right. let's face it, you're not robots. The folks out there aren't robots. How do you balance between being data-driven in decision-making and using gut decisions. Let me start with you, Joseph. Right. So we hear a lot from clients who they call us or other investors that will say, you know, I, I feel good about this stock. I want to purchase a lot of this stock. I think it's going to blow up. Or they say, can you remove this position from my portfolio? I don't really like that anymore. And you really start to dive a little bit deeper. Well, why do you feel this way? Well, I heard on the news this, or my neighbor actually gave me this piece of information. And as money managers, we respectfully don't care about the opinions, right? We care about data and evidence. We want to use time-tested processes in order to help us invest clients' money because when we're working with somebody, we're managing their entire net worth, which means we have to go based off of earnings, uh, their track history, ratios based on those accounts, right? I mean, the time for gut instincts is when you're picking lottery numbers, not when you're you want, not when you're investing somebody's money. And I don't mess with the science of my lottery picking. Okay, <laughs> I need to retire too. I don't want to step on any toes. <laughs> here, but I met with a client not too long ago, and I was looking at their, their statements, and we started the conversation there, and they've been working with their advisor for about a year now, and almost 90% of the account was invested in one stock, and this one stock between October of last year and almost 12 months of working with that advisor had gone down a little over 60%. Oh. And so when I started asking him, well, why is this invested this? I mean, a, a quick Google search for me to look at the analytics of this company, I found that their net profit margin is negative, right? I don't want to bore you with all the analytics, but this company wasn't even making any money. There was so, what is the real reason why this advisor told his client to do this and did it for him? And so the, the client had actually ended up texting the advisor, asking him, hey, you know, I have some questions about this. What the advisor sent back was a news article about a popular talking head suggesting that stock. Oh, that was his reasoning for yeah. purchasing that stock for that client. It's a true story. And, you know. And by the way, again, I'll address this. So, yes, uh, Eric and Joseph here are on television. But you would never give out advice like, you know, what to buy, what to sell. That is not what your practice is right, about. Right. You start with come into the office. Let's find out your goals and objectives. Let's find out what you want to do about retirement. And then the next step is maybe see if there are solutions that you can help with them with. You're not stock pickers. You're not market timing. You're right. not using gut decisions, right? right? Yeah. And I always say this, purpose determines placement. And you're going to hear me say that over and over and over again. 
One of, one of my best friends and mentors, Sam, who's actually an advisor up in Wisconsin, has been helping me for a very long time now. He has very affluent, successful clients, and his practice has exploded. So what he does is he sits down with me every once in a while and says, okay, what are you doing? And so the bottom line is, is that we really created this process, and he's actually adapted a lot of our, or, or adopted a lot of our processes because Understand that purpose of your retirement really determines the placement of your investments. And we always talk about the personal financial blueprint, and I really think that people are starting to realize what a powerful tool that is. Right. Uh, we've talked about analytics, trying to be a little bit more data-driven, keeping our emotions out. Right. One last topic I want to hit, though. Joseph, I'll start with you. Timing the market. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of studies that show that no one, even the most professional money managers cannot consistently time the market. You might get it right once, you might mm -hmm. get it right twice. Uh, timing the market, do you feel like a lot of our viewers are accidentally trying to do that? Because again, they listen to something, they hear a right. tip and they think, well, this is the wave that I want to ride on top of. Right. Well, getting back to those general media concerns, like when you're listening to the news, you hear a possible slowdown in economic growth or recession on the rise, right? And what do people do? They want to move their whole account into cash. Yeah. And then they're sitting on the sidelines and they're constantly worried, well, when do I get back into the market? Right. Or this, you know, in 2022, we saw so many clients, even with us or not with us, that are moving their whole IRAs to gold. They're trying these crazy investments. And we've even seen advisors who now have lost so much money for their clients, they're making that that portfolio way too aggressive for that client. And I think yeah. what's really missing out there is an investment philosophy, which you really need mm. to invest in today's markets. I mean, it's like trying to steer a ship through a storm and not having any type of direction for you. It's almost impossible to do without having a philosophy or plan. And if you're working with an advisor, you want to make sure that they have that at least a plan. But more importantly, you want to have something to hold them accountable to sticking to that when markets get rough. Right. Right. Eric, uh, last before we wrap up today's program, the, the Blueprint is a great offering, but I, I want to be really, really clear for the viewers out there. Mm -hmm. What exactly is it? They call, they come in for the very first time. Right. You're going to do exactly what for them? So what we're going to do is we're going to sit down with that client. We're going to go over their current statements. We're going to import all of these into our personal financial blueprint software. It's going to kick out more information about your portfolio, more than likely than you've ever known before. You're going to understand if you have duplication over diversification. You're going to understand your fees, how much risk, how much volatility is in there. How can we actually reduce that? And then what we're really taking a look at is are you over allocated in some areas and is the portfolio relevant? Is the portfolio up to date? So again, this personal financial blueprint is based on your exact portfolio, whether it's good or whether it's bad. If it starts off really good, it'll prove to you through the rest of the report that it's good. If it's not so great, it's also going to prove to you why it's not so great. It's a very powerful tool. I've been using it now for 22 years, and it's still as powerful today as it was back then. Give us a call today. Eric, Joseph, thank you so much for talking about perspective on trying to keep our emotions you know, out of our financial decisions. We know we're apt to do it, but if you're worried about doing it yourself, all you got to do is call the phone number right here. We'll start your own personal financial retirement blueprint. And everything that Eric was just talking about, it's complimentary to get started. 800-779-1942. Thank you for watching Retirement Talk. We'll be back again next week.